So what we're trying to do in the stand here today is give people an impression or an idea as to what they're going to have to do to get their sprayer past the sprayer test. So there is a sprayer test, as most people know at this stage, which every sprayer, farm sprayer, is going to have passed by November 16. So we have one year really to get us our, ourselves in order. And these are the key kind of elements of that sprayer test. What's actually going to happen when your tractor and sp or when your sprayer is being tested? The first and most important thing, I suppose, is the PTO and having the sprayer clean. That's what you'll have to do before you actually, uh, or as the first part of the test, before the tester will actually complete the test. These tests, by the way, are going to be done by testers which are registered with the department and who have done uh, a course showing them what to do in the test and they're testing to actual fixed standard an EN standard uh, which determines exactly what they test so the first thing is your sprayer must be clean the PTO must be properly guarded after that it's a combination of visual visual tests and a combination of parts which are actually tested the visual tests are really looking at things like whether there are any leaks in the sprayer when you, whether any of the hoses are damaged whether the filters are all in place, the correct filters, and you need a suction filter and a pressure filter on your sprayer, on all sprayers. You don't actually need a nozzle filter for the test, but if they're on it, there's absolutely no problem leaving them on it. Uh, the pressure gauge itself is a huge, is hugely important, and it is actually physically, it is actually tested. The accuracy of the gauge itself is tested, and whether it's to the correct specification. Uh, this is probably one of the more important components of the of the sprayer test. So you, you know you will have to have a correct pressure gauge and an accurately working pressure gauge and that is tested as part of the test procedure itself. As I said earlier, absolutely no leaks on any part of the sprayer or the, or the boom itself. The sprayer, the operator must be able to read the contents of the tank as he's filling the sprayer so the sight tube must be clearly visible to the sprayer operator. He must be able to empty the tank manually and control that entry if that's needed. There must be a basket filter in the filling aperture of the sprayer. If the sprayer is fitted with an induction hopper, which most sprayers on tillage farms are now, um, that, that's for taking the chemicals into the sprayer, that must be working properly. It must be taken in the chemicals. The rinse part for rinsing the bottles must be actually working on that. If it's not fitted with that unit, well then it won't be tested. Uh, it's only if it's going to be tested. We move on then to uh, another part of the testing, the actual testing part, is the pressure drop to the boom. So that's really checking that the sizes of the components, particularly the spray lines, is correct for that. So if there's too big a pressure drop between the pressure gauge and the actual nozzle on the boom, it fails to test. So that's another important part that people have to get right. The most important part though is the evenness of spray. And that's where, that's where we check the nozzle output from each individual nozzle is going to be actually checked with a nozzle checker to make sure that each nozzle is within spec and that we have an even application right across the whole boom width. And that's done, it can be done with a simple graduated cylinder and a stopwatch or more typically with testers they'll be doing it with an electronic gauge and that's testing the evenness across the whole sprayer. Okay, so that's more or less the testing. And uh, as I say, all we're trying to show you there was what you to look for on your own sprayer because you're going to be there with the sprayer. 90% um, of the things are an easy fix that you're going to meet on most sprayers. So they can be done in advance of the test. Now most of the people do the testing will repair it during the test for you if you want to, but you will be paying them for that. The main things I think to watch for though are the obvious leaks. Your sprayer has to be good on leaks, has to have a straight boom, most important though, the pressure gauge is good and the nozzles are good because that output test at the end is quite demanding. You have to be within 10% of what your nozzles, uh, the rate of capacity of the nozzles is. But if you do that, uh, you should be okay.